Your Word for Today with Pastor Billy Burke. Great to have you today on Your Word for Today. I mean, what a way to, to begin your day, to continue your day, or to end your day, and that is with the written Word of God. It's greater than any book written, greater than any philosophy ever spoken. It's the only word that's settled in the heavens. It's the only, it's the only literature where the Bible says he exalted his own word above his own name. Wow, amazing. Let's go to the scripture today, 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 5. We're going to start there and read a few verses. And as he lay and slept under the juniper tree, behold, an angel touched him, meaning Elijah, and he said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake bacon on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink, and he laid back down again. And the angel of the Lord came again in a second time, and he said, and he touched him on the, and said, Arise, eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose, and he did eat, and he did drink, and he went in the strength of that meat for forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mountain of God. This angel knew that the journey ahead was a difficult journey. Elijah had just outrun all of the finest Arabian horses. He outran them for 20 miles. 20 miles he outraced of the finest Arabian horses. And he got to this place and he heard about the contract that Jezebel had out on his life. And he is just like, how could that happen? I just, you know, he just began to think he was untouchable. Sometimes we do that. We begin to think that we can't be touched and we get a little caught up too much in ourself. Elijah got so frustrated with this, he sat down by the juniper tree and he wanted to die. He really said, I, I, I don't want to live. I, if you can't protect me from everything, and, and God will protect you from a lot of things, but he expects you and your mouth and your faith to protect you from the rest. God's not a babysitter. You know, he's raising soldiers. He's raising men and women. He, he's raising the, the, the manifest sons and daughters in this hour. And he wants you and I to begin to believe him for the blood protection and the angels. I'm not saying he don't step in there and, you know, cement all of that and cover all of that. But he still wants to see that there's a work, a progressive work of the grace working in and around you. Anyhow, Elijah was really despondent. And he, wanted, he, don't, he didn't speak recklessly when he said, I, I want to die, take my life. He meant it. What did God do? Sent an angel, sent an angel that manifested that he actually saw and put a cruise of water by his head and, and, a, and a hot cake and he cooked it off of the fire. Imagine an angel cooking this food for you. It wasn't to die. God wasn't sending an angel to, and, you know, to prepare him for death. He was trying to die, but God was saying, I don't think so. I think you're just exhausted. You're battle weary. You've been in a little too much warfare at the moment. So I'm going to nourish you with food. Sometimes food, physical food, can be nourishment to both your spirit and your body. So he nourishes him with this uh, cake and this water, he stands up and he thinks, well, this is, I feel so good. He felt so good, he laid back down and went to sleep again. And then the angel woke him up again and said, come on, we got to eat a little bit more. You're not ready for this journey. I need you to, come on, eat some more cake, drink some more water. We're headed up to the great Mount Horeb. And the Bible says that he did do that and they went to Mount Horeb. Now, the thing about the journey to Mount Horeb, as you read further into this story, God had his intentions, and Elijah had his intentions, and they weren't the same. Why does God strengthen you? Why does God empower you? Why does God intervene sick from sicknesses and diseases and death and despondency? Why does he step in and do all of that? Why does he answer our prayers? 
Why does he show himself so faithful? And you recover and you get healed and you come through the surgery and you get the money. And you feel so much better about yourself. It's not so that you can just go any way that you want. It's so that you can go the way that the master has you to go. See, God wanted Elijah to get strong and the angel said, we got to prepare you for the journey. The journey to where? The journey to go and anoint King Haziel. The journey to go and begin to multiply and transfer his anointing unto others. That's what God had in mind. What did Elijah have in mind? He, <laughs> he wanted to retire. He was thanking God for the food and for the strength so now he could go hide in a cave and feel sorry for himself. That's what he did. He, you know, he misspent his grace. As a friend of mine has once said to me, don't misuse, misspend your grace the wrong way. Don't we do that sometimes? Don't we get so encouraged and so fired up and, and yet we use it to just, to just pleasure ourselves? We don't use everything that we happens to us to, to be a better student of the scriptures or to be a better worshiper or to be a better giver or to be a better forgiver. Imagine all of the people that have been blessed by God so much that forgive so little. Or the people that have been blessed with so much money and don't even give 10% back. See, God doesn't bless you for that kind of behavior. He blesses you and gives you strength to be used for His glory. Yeah, He, he, he blesses you in healing so that your body can be strong, not just to work out at the gym more. Nothing wrong with that. That's a great thing to do. But so is helping people, helping your pastor, helping the church, helping your neighbor, helping your son who needs some help in this early marriage of his. He gives you strength to help your wife with the three children and, and the two dogs and the one cat. And you got a house full of stuff, but you're not carrying your fair share of the load. Why does he strengthen you? Why does he bring you through that surgery? So you can testify. So when the preacher says, any testimonies here today, I have one. And then you tell about, brought you through the surgery. That's why God strengthens us. And why does he prosper you? So that you spend it all on you? No. So you go to the cave and think about you? No. He, he prospers you to be a distributor of the riches. That you know that all of this didn't come just from your work and your labor, but God breathed on that. He breathed on your seed. 30, 60, 90, and 100 fold. And then he's, he, he's enabled you to, to have what you never had growing up. You've passed your father. You've passed your grandfather. You don't have a car. You have a car, a truck, and a boat. Or maybe you just have a car, and you could have that if you wanted to. It's not about how much you have. It's the power of what you could do. That's why he prospers. That's why he gives you money strength. That's why he gives you physical strength. Why does he give you emotional strength? To tell people you love them. To share your heart. To have enough strength in you emotionally. To not just have to watch a movie to feel something. Or read a book. You know, or go to the zoo and just wonder over the, the creation of animals in the earth. He strengthens you emotionally so that you have the ability to hug that pastor, hug that guy at work, shake their hand, tell that police officer, tell your children to express yourself. Because what greater thing can you pass on to somebody than the love of God? He strengthen you emotionally, strengthen you with money, strengthen you with health, strengthen you in your area of expertise. That'd be carpentry or, you know, even in the ministry or your singing, any, any of that. Why does God take you up to another levels of anointing? So you share it. 
So you look for places to sing, to preach, to work, to, to articulate your skill. You're so happy because you're so much better at what you do. And you're, you've been strengthened into your craft. And that is so you can what? Share it. Elijah didn't do that. Elijah misread why he was strengthened and he wasted, he wasted that angel's visit and he wasted the cake and the water and he hid in the cave. He couldn't get over. See, a lot of things we can get past, but we can't get over. I'm gonna say that again. A lot of things we get past it, but sometimes we never get over it. God wants you to get past it and over it. And he wants you to get ready because your experience is a launching pad to be able to what? To identify with other people. Yeah, if you've been through it, then you know how difficult that is. If you were broke at one time, you may be broke now. I'm, we're going to pray for you at the end of this broadcast. But you may be in a place right now of like, not, you're not dying, but you're sickly. You're, you're just, you know, you're, you're taking more vitamins. You're taking every letter in the alphabet. That's fine. No condemnation there. But how about the day you don't have to take any? You can't sleep. You visit the restroom three times a night. It hurts when you get into bed and it hurts when you get out of bed. And you know healing is for you. Shouldn't you be saying, Lord, show me, show me your path. What's Psalm 25 say? Teach me your ways. Show me your path. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. That's what Psalm 25 says. It's right here. It says, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. That's, that's David saying, you know, I'm out of answers. I am out of answers in this, in this journey of mine. I got a madman chasing me. I've lost my own city. I think I'm a king, but I don't no longer have a throne. I still love you. I feel you. And yet, oh, Lord, I, I'm just, I can't figure this one out. It don't add up. Nothing makes any sense. Yesterday a king, today a fugitive. Oh Lord, help unto thee, O oh Lord. Show me, show me your path. Teach me your ways. That's right here. Teach me your ways. Show me your path. Well, that'll keep you humble. That'll keep you dependent on the right person. You know, you that and me that, you get to know and understand maybe a little too much and we think it's just always going to be that way. And no, not as long as we have the enemy of our soul who is, con who, who is committed to our destruction. He left nothing better than to destroy testimonies, health, finances, marriages. And it's important today that in this particular teaching here that we know how to take the strength that he does give us. Instead of just coming home and saying, boy, that was a great message and what are we going to do today? Let's go play badminton. Let's go play. Nothing wrong with that in itself. But when do we say, boy, I'm strong enough to read some Bible today. Boy, my eyes are better so I can read. My ears are better so I can hear. My body's better so that I can, I'm going to go to church tonight. I'm going to get down to the rescue mission and help serve food. Hey, the, our church is having a, I'm going to go down and help unload that stuff for the Thanksgiving outreach. Energy. Energy. Do you know how many people would, would give anything to have that energy again? God gives it to you. And then he watches, what do you do with the energy? He gives you money to watch, what do you do with the money? He gives you favor, what do they do with the favor? He gives you a great testimony. What's he doing with that story? I love teaching the Word of God. I love teaching this book. I love praying for people. But the thing I like more, the thing I like most is remembering that day, that Friday morning service with just days to live. 
No hope, no way for this young guy, that young guy then. And I was taken to a meeting in downtown Pittsburgh, touched by a precious lady. And cancer that was all through my body, metastatic all through, left instantly. I love telling that story. We're going to put that in a book form here real soon. I just can't wait to do that. The name of the book is I Still Believe in Miracles. We're working on one book now. We hope to be out by the end of this year, Cultivating His Healing Presence. Already working on a second book right with that. So we're trying to get information to you so you can get strong. So you don't hide in the cave thinking about, oh, woe is me. I wasn't born to the right parents. I wasn't raised in the right city. I didn't go to the right church. Quit being woe is you. One guy walked up to me a while back. He said, boy, it's not fair. You got to know Catherine Coleman. I said, really? You think that's not fair? He said, how's come you got to know her and I didn't get to know her? I said, well, I got to know her because I had brain cancer. Would you like to have brain cancer? I'd rather have not met her and never had cancer. How about that? He didn't know what to say. Well, he was just feeling sorry for himself. I felt like saying, hey, you can do this too. Come on, get busy. Get meditating, get speaking, get cultivating. Why don't you God relocate you out of this spot you're, on, you're in and get you somewhere you never dreamed, you never imagined. Isn't that what Ephesians 3.20 says? Beyond what you can even ask or think, not finish it there, according to that power, according to that meditation, according to that speaking, according to that worship that's within you. Get busy today. God wants to relocate you. He's waiting to. Not to the cave of self-pity. Remember that mountain had, that mountain had two places to be, the cave of self-pity or the ledge. That's where he went. He went out onto the ledge of the mountain. Oh my God, that's powerful. He went out onto the ledge. And that's when the Spirit said to him, go anoint Hazael King. Go spread your anointing. God is saying to you today, it's time. It's time to come out of that cave. That, that, it's, it's time to not misuse anything good that God does for you again. And if, and if you're not one of those that wants to go tell everybody right away or, or go do whatever, some of the things that were suggested, guess one thing you always can do and should do? I praise you, Lord. I just thank you, Lord. Praise isn't singing only. Praise is communicating talk. It's communicating emotion. It's communicating realness. That you are grateful. That he gave you that money. That he gave you that new position. That he brought your daughter back from a land of darkness. That he gave your son desire again to follow in the footsteps of righteous people. Oh, there's so much to be grateful for. I'm grateful for this broadcasting, the Victory Station. To be connected to all of these amazing teachers and preachers. To be in the, just one of many in a menu that makes an assault on the dark kingdom that makes an assault on sickness and disease, that gives hope 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Thank you, Kenneth and Gloria. Thank you. God's on your side. He really, really is. He really, really is. And I know there's days like Elijah, you may feel like I'm gonna check out. I'm gonna quit. It doesn't work for me. That's what one guy told me, it doesn't work for me. I said, well, how long have you worked it? How long have you stood on the promise of healing? He said, well, I prayed in tongues and it didn't work. Well, how many times did you do it? We don't know. We don't know the requirements. You know, we're, you know, we're, we're not in management. We're out here in the labor. We are in management. He's in ownership. And it's important that we follow the owner of all of this, the author of all of this. It'll work for you. Jesus said in John 6, labor, right here, labor after the meat that doesn't perish. Billy Burke labors in this. I don't just read it, I labor in it. I'll read it and say, oh Lord, show me. Show me, show me. Show. I'll, get out of, I'll get out of Jewish family Bible and I'll read out of the Jewish family Bible. So what's that saying? What's the Amplified saying? What's the New American Standard saying? I'm laboring in this because I got to get it. I gotta get it. I gotta go preach at the church. 
I, I got to go to Eagle Mountain International Church in June. We're going to go hold some healing services there. I hope you plan on being with us. Check their schedule or our schedule for the exact dates of that. In between there, we have a lot of things planned. I'd like you to be a part of that. Don't underestimate any one little thing that he does to encourage you. Oh, I have found sometimes the people that you run into, they say something so simple and you just live with it for days. Can't believe that lady said that. That was really, really special. You're a carrier, my friend. You're a carrier of good news. You're a carrier of the glory. You're a carrier of destiny. God has invested in you. The best is yet to come. Let's go see a miracle that just happened in a recent meeting. I'm coming back to pray for you. You got to hear this story. Your husband. He's from Cuba. He's from Cuba. Yes. Had brain tumor. He had a brain cancer Brain first. cancer. He had four surgeries in the brain. So when I met this man in Cuba, I was going as a missionary to Cuba. Mm. Then I met him, and I, his son asked me to pray for his father because he had a brain tumor and a brain cancer, and they were afraid that the father was going to pass away. So anyway, I started praying for him, and that's how I met him. That's how we get involved into the evangelist in Cuba. He is a man of God, I might say that. He's a man of God who's very faithful. But uh, as we continued our relationship, he asked me to be marry him. And then I started going on my knees and praying and fasting and asking God for an answer. And I said, God, do you really want me to marry this sick man? This is not my future. It's not a future. He's in Cuba and I live in Canada. But anyway, one of those nights I heard very clear the voice of God and say, marry him and he's going to be okay. He's going to be here. But I listened to God and I said, okay, I'll marry him, pay the consequences. So he was supposed to have the surgery in January of 2014. And I came the first meeting to Pastor Billy Burko. I came and I was in a such a pain in my soul, not because he was about to be my husband, but because of the pain that I knew he's going through already for so many years. Anyway, pastor prayed for me, and he gave me a piece of prayer cloth that they usually give before, I don't know anymore. And then he said to me, take my instructions. He said, bring it to your husband, put it in his head, put it under his pillow, put it under his heart, whatever, as long as it's touching his head. And I left to Cuba the next day. I went to Cuba and I said to him, do this, do that. And we prayed together and we fast together, but I couldn't stay for too long in Cuba because of the expenses. I went back again before January the 10th, I went the 8th, and he was already happy. He was saying at the hospital people that he was healed that he was healed, that he was healed. And when they were preparing him, and I said, we like to have an MRI before, an MRI before in his head. I can't test. I, I, I'm, I'm sure that he's not gonna have a surgery. And they did it. And they did it that day. And to the glory of God, <laughs> honestly, nothing. <laughs> Where do you hear this? So anyway, what do you the, hear tumor, the, doctor the, the tumor would disappear. So they were confused. They were, they were confused. They were moving around. They call us a meeting, all the doctor, all the student doctor, and they call us and they say, and they call us and they said, we want to know what kind of witchcraft are you doing? <laughs> Come on, somebody better praise them. Come on. 
What's that mean he went to the cave and he got into self-pity? Well, you know, that was a real cave and that's where he was. And of course, God came into that cave and said to him, what are you doing here? I can't believe you're feeling sorry for yourself. You just outran those Arabian horses. You just knocked off 300 false prophets. You know, you just came from a house where, you know, I mean, come on, what? You fed supernatural food, raised the, 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 the lady's dead. Oh, come on, Elisha, what is going on with you? Sometimes we, we just, we're able to just forget some of the best things that happened to us. We've got to watch that. We've got to curb that. Finally, he did get the message. He came out of that because he heard that voice. Whether you hear that voice because you're reading the voice, when you read it, you can hear it. Whether you're singing it, you can hear it. Whether you're praying in tongues or praying in your own language, you, you, there's so many things you can do to awaken this voice of the Holy Spirit. I want that for you. God wants that for you. This is the way, walk ye in it. You know, that His Spirit bears witness with your spirit that you're a son and a daughter of the Most High God. I pray for your healing now. I pray that God would touch you and strengthen you. That He would heal stomach cancer and esophagus cancer. I pray that He would heal those cancers. There's just healing cancer all through the... There's so many different kinds of cancer being wonderfully touched. For if, if swelling of the legs and swelling of the feet, can holding water and fluid, many on water pills, God's releasing you in Jesus' name. Releasing carpal tunnel and arthritis of the hands. Glaucoma and macular degeneration of the eyes. God's eyes, these eyes are clearing up. Oh, Master, I thank you. Today, reach out to him as you sense this change. Let it be something that says, you know what? I'm going to serve him with even more of my life than I ever had before. Call me, write me, be with you next week, next week on the broadcast, be with us. But please consider becoming a world partner with our ministry. We'd really, really appreciate it. We'll treat you good. We'll treat you good. Remember, remember Mark 10, 27, with God, all things are possible. God bless you. Do you desire more understanding of the miraculous and a deeper walk with the Lord? Enroll today in Pastor Billy's Miracle Mentorship Program, a weekly online on-demand video discipleship class. For just $19.97 a month, you can join Pastor Billy for a weekly video lesson featuring teaching from God's Word to build faith and expectation, mentorship moments about Pastor Billy's journey in ministry, group question and answer sessions with Pastor Billy, miracle analysis demonstrating what happens during the process of a miracle and more, examining the process of building a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit. Enroll today at miraclementorship.com slash registration or by calling 888-743-2533.